Welcome back. Time for our first conversation right here on The Breakfast. Uh, will the 2023 presidential election, uh, will it be a defining moment for the Nigerian youth and the future of Nigeria? Now, the most recent independent national electoral commission uh, INEC voters' registration data suggests that youth have a historic role uh, to play in the forthcoming election. They have an incredible demographic advantage. And if they choose to, can decide the outcome of the election in a way they deem favorable to Nigeria. Now, INEC recently released the updated voter registration data uh, showing the distribution by age group. The data revealed that uh, 37.06 uh, million registered voters uh, constituting 39.65% are youth between the ages of 18 and 34 and uh, are 33.4 million which equals 35.75%, uh, while middle-aged middle -aged persons are between the ages of 35 and 49 are in uh, the 18.94% the category, or 17.7 uh, million uh, of them. Also, elderly voters between the ages of 50 and 69 uh, are, uh, or amounts to 5.2 million. That's 5.66%, and these are senior citizens age 70 and above. Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, also has said that youth constitute the highest number of voters who will vote in the February 25 and March 11 elections, uh, with 48 million out of the entire 93.5 million eligible voters. Now, this age group still makes about 40% of the registered voters, and if properly mobilized, according to uh, political analysts, it can uh, tilt the balance of the political election. Um, so we have a guest uh, in the program on, on standby this morning, of course, to do justice uh, to this uh, topic. Looking at our youths open to the political process than uh, we have thought of in the past, you know, are they able to make a, 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 a determining, you know, deciding um, impact as far as the elections are concerned? Now, they've always participated in the political process by joining political parties, you know, participate, participating in election campaigns and activities, engaging with the parties, government officials, you know, partaking in communal activities and all, all political activities that we can talk about. But how would they be decisive in determining who becomes Nigeria's next president? Suleiman Akonde is a public affairs analyst. He's a guest joining us via Zoom from Abuja. Suleiman, uh, once again, good morning and thank you very much for your time. Good morning, and thank you for having me. All right. Um, uh, do you agree with the, the analysis uh, by some political pundits that the young people looking at INEX voter register, um, that they will be the deciding factor in tomorrow's election? Yeah. There is no doubt that um, the youth constitute the bulk part of the uh, electoral population as released by INEX. But at the same time, we must get uh, something right. Right from the time when the not you and not too young to run bid was signed into law, I think that was the first paradigm shift in uh, youth participatory in uh, politics. It's not just serving as voters this time, also being in part of the electoral process and also standing for elections as youth. Because most of the problem the bedeviling this nation has to do with what affect the youth generally. So we believe that if youths are also trusted with positions of power, they have a lot to contribute as far as politics and leadership in Nigeria is concerned. So for the 2023 election, it will be largely shaped by youth. Just like the, the, the statistics you just uh, roll out now, more than 40% of people that will be voting in this election are youth. But another thing we have to look at is that I think I'm, I will be looking forward to that when we look at the turnout voters. So let's also compare if 40% are youth that will be voting, how many of these percentage will be turning out on the day of uh, election? I will look forward to that. So as far as this election is concerned, it is for the youth and they have a very huge role to determine who becomes the next president or the next uh, senator, the next governor of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So this is youth o'clock. Hmm. This is youth o'clock indeed. I'm just going to give you, uh, we have to take that, that, uh, that of you <laughs> indeed. But um, are, we, are we over um, emphasizing on the importance of the youth vote? Um, because if you look at the previous elections, I'm sure we can agree that young people were still 
out there, you know, voting. You look at those who are going for campaigns, those who are even, even being mobilized by these parties to go and uh, wear the T-shirts the of their favorite parties and uh, candidates, those who carry the placards, those who go for the rallies, you know, those who are, who are popular, who fill the buses from the different local government areas to go for the rallies, you know, those who are even still in snatch ballot boxes, these are young people. So is it a new thing in 2023 or has it been there before now? No, it has always been there. Don't forget, the hate group that has the energy at this uh, 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 youth, so they will always be available to do things like political rally. And in few cases, you understand, the vices and the bad side of uh, election are also perpetrated by this same uh, youth. But at the same time, let's look at the bigger picture of the huge role this youth has to uh, uh, play in the election process as far as Nigeria is concerned. So, and I think we're not overemphasizing and not giving uh, a lot of, uh, no, not making it look as if uh, the youth has more role than any other person. It is the truth. One good thing is that statistics don't lie. If you have a, a, a demography that represents 40% of the voting population, I think that demography should be taken very, very serious. And uh, away from that, if you also look at it, uh, the, let's look at it from the you know, not too young to run a bill. Most of the people that make the bill to become a re reality, they are mostly youth. And most of the um, federal uh, House of Rep members or State of Assembly members, in 2019 election, there's a lot of revelation that comes across. But so, uh, we have a lot of youths that got elected into elective position. So uh, we're just hoping that 2023 will not be different. We will now have a lot of youth that will also be vying for election. And I think if I, if my record get, if I get my record right, this 2023 election did not even have a lot of uh, young people contesting for uh, president. So, um, but at least in other elective uh, positions, we have youth uh, that will be vying for various uh, elections. So we're not overemphasizing. This is the youth time. And what the youth will just need to do is that we need to take advantage of this. As I said, democracy is not just about voting. You can also be voted in. So you should also start participating. And I think one of the, um, one thing we are getting wrong as a youth is that we just want to get this in at the platter of good. You have to engage. You have to also be part of the political process. Join a political party. Uh, take part in primary election. Let the party present you for, um, for this uh, same election. No matter what, if you make the ballot paper, it's a very big win you know, in the first place. So the day of the winning world will, will surely come. So it has to be a process. Democracy itself is a process. It don't just happen, happen uh, overnight. So you should get involved. Hmm. Um, you, you've talked about the fact that, you know, it's, it's not a new phenomenon of having a lot of young people being part of uh, the, you know, the, the voter register or participating in, in the electoral process. Um, so so you've, you've made some points, but particularly about 2023, what will be different about the youth vote in 2023 when compared to 2019, 2015, and other preceding elections? Okay. Uh, I think what will be different is that um, in 2023, unlike 2019 or 2015, the youths have a lot of um, a kind of uh, energy and they show a kind of uh, zeal they have never shown before. Let me take you to the uh, NSAS uh, protest. NSAS protest was coordinated by youth, funded by youth, mobilized by youth, among other things. But where they all just got it wrong is that let it as a leadership, you understand? So one thing, I think lesson is learned from the NSAS protest. The energy is there, the zeal is there, the commitment is there. But at a point, the whole movement lost its space because it does not have a kind of leadership direction that will say, oh, this is where we are going, and this to the extent we are going. So in 2023 election, just like we have it in the previous election, youths are coming out this time. Not just coming out, they are also coming out to vote for someone that will solve bulk of their problem. Because bulk of the problem we have in this country, youths are the most affected, right from unemployment, out of school children, even underemployment, and everything, any social biases, this demography are the most affected. So it is time for the youth to also vote in leaders that will put their interests first before any interest. 
So in a country whereby you have a demography that is as big, that is energetic, that is employable, and that can serve it, that can give a kind of a human capital development, I believe that demography should be tapped. And that demography should also shape who becomes the president or any elective post in 2023. I'd also like to ask if we're taking into cognizance the fact that vote buying is a very critical issue, especially with the introduction of technology. So it feels like the political gladiators or this uh, political elite have devised a means, you know, to reinforce and ensure that vote buying gets to a certain strata. So I'd like you to speak to that. Vote buying, the number of uh, registered voters, especially the fact that we have a high turnout in terms of youths, but we hope that they would also turn out to the polls tomorrow. Uh, my question is, how do we connect this? Those who are buying votes, you can't take the youths out of it. So you still have uh, those who are being induced to get votes and the youths are indulging. Um, you see, vote buying is as old as democracy itself. And it happens in almost uh, in every, uh, every democracy. Uh, democracy. It's just that it is more pronounced in this part of the world than anywhere else. And one thing is this, as I told you, a, pop a population or a demography that is energetic, that have the energy, that have the steel and that have the commitment, people will always tap into it to carry out, to perpetrate their own ulterior mo motive. Inducement has always been there, but at the same time, we have to look at it that this, in this always comes from politicians. and. The good side is that the youths now are very, very interested in who becomes their leader. And you see, before now, let's look at from 1999 to now, most Nigerians are not even interested in the party primaries. You cannot see, you, they are not interested in the party primaries. Right from that is where, but that is where the elections start from the primary. So they are not even, they are interested in who becomes the primary and the flag bearer of their party. They now become interested in who lead a constituency or who do a party present for election. So inducement is part of it. And I can tell you, part of the job some of the youth organization have done is like a National Youth Council of Nigeria, the uh, Not Too Young to Run movement. I've also tried to sensitize the youth that you cannot sell your future with, uh, for a pot of porridge. Is a five thousand naira inducement, ten thousand naira inducement. How long will it lie? How long will you spend that for the next four years? So you have got to understand that no, this is the election to win. So why take, why allow you to be induced by politician? So it will always happen. I get politicians are always smart. They have a way of getting around when this inducement among all that is. But I can tell you, compared to twenty fifteen or twenty nineteen, this has really, really, really gone down because. People are now sensitized. People know more. The youth, even the youth, know more. I get it. A demography that has the energy that will always be influenced or induced to do their bidding. But I think the story is changing, and we hope it get better. Mm. Uh, there are some people who insist that oh, you know, yes, Ineke is saying that they have a uh, X Y Z amount of registered voters. Um, indeed, also talking about the number of voters uh, that they expect to see come out to vote on D-Day. Um, and uh, we're looking at different categories of, of voters across um, the age demo demographies. Um, so will argue, all right, uh, out of the 93.5 million uh, elig eligible voters, uh, some are still arguing that most of them just went to get registered so they could have a, a card they can use for their bank, open bank accounts, and for transactions, anytime they go to say, give us a, an ID card, they'll bring their voter's card. They're not really going to go use it to vote. What, what do you say to that? Yeah, I think that is, um, that boils down to the fact that we need to have a, a kind of holistic database, a database that speaks to all, so that people don't just see the voter's card as a means to just use for identification or to open bank account, among other things. Let me give you a very um, funny uh, example. You have even seen people that they say they have a voter's card and they've never used it to vote in their life. And when you ask them to present their ID card either at a function or in a place where they have been, they have been screened for a particular uh, program, what they do is that they come up with their voting and their voter's card as a means of uh, identification. But if we have a more holistic, the, uh, the national ID card is there 
and uh, international passport is there. So let's have a uh, holistic database that speaks to the fact that people don't even have to see the voter's card as only a means of identification. Number two is this. We must not forget the fact that most both of these youth are the victims of electoral violence. And no, no demography life more than the youth demography we are also speaking to when it comes to electoral violence. And when voter apathy is setting and when um, election is not sure that will be conducted in a conducive and safe, uh, safe and peaceful environment, people will, the apathy will always set in. People will see the voter's card not just uh, a, a, a tool for voting. They rather use it to, to do other things. So we, we have to call on the government and all the electoral empires and security agencies. If you can make the, our elections safe, youths are ready to come out to vote and they will not just see the voter's card as a means of identification, rather a tool for electing the next leader of Nigeria. Mm. Um, uh, we've seen, we've seen. I mean, in 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 brief previous elections, that young people are, are playing football. I'm sure you are very well. <laughs> you've seen that around. You know, one one or two places they're playing football on the streets. They're not interested in voting. We've had a high level of vote apathy. Um, this time around, you're saying that yes, indeed, you agree with the, with the, with the uh, analysis of some pundits that young people are going to come out en masse to be a part of this election. Um, what what messages and uh, what issues? Because different candidates have um, have sold themselves in their programs, their candidature uh, on different agendas. What issues will determine how the young people vote? Is it about economic, the economy issue, economic issues? Are we looking at security, jobs? Maybe is it about uh, um, answers? What what issues will determine? who the young people vote for? Uh, to me personally, I think it has to do with the economy. If you have a president that will come in and will better their life. Nigerian youth, and one good thing about Nigerian youth is that they're not even asking for much. All they are just asking that, provide a conducive environment for us to thrive, for us to work and show our talent. You need to see, look at the startup industry, look at the IT world, look at the creative world. Nigerians' youth have shown that just give them the right environment, the enable environment, and they can do on that. So looking at the 2023 election, Nigerian youth are not just asking for much. What they are saying is that let's have a president or someone that will come in that will give us a conducive environment, be it start or be it anything, with just a piece of laptop and even phones. People are doing wonders and making money in the, comfort, in, in, in the corner of their room, making money and doing legit business. And also, it is very important that it has to do with protecting the rights of youth, you understand? So it is at this stage that we must start understanding that um, being, being youth does not say that all youths are bad. And the stereotypes must also stop that, oh, you are wearing this, you do your hair is somehow, your clothes is somehow. So we need to go beyond this. The stereotype has to, to stop. And you cannot even say that a 25 or a 30 years old youth cannot drive a car of 5 million naira. All these are stereotypes that have been a problem in this part of the world, whereby youth are now subjected to uh, a kind of searches that are not even needed. So Nigerian youth, what they are asking for is that, and what will shape their decision in 2023 election is any presidential candidate that will come in and better the economy and give them a conducive environment where they can thrive. Well, we have to go now. No, no, we, we, we're not yet ready to go. I've just been told that we can continue. Uh, 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 but, but, but we have issues that are, are, um, have, have been at play um, as regards previous elections. We look at cultural factors. We look at religious factors um, and all that. Uh, there are some people who believe that the culture and religion still play a heavy role as far as elections are concerned. I can give you an instance in Lagos, for instance. Some ana analysis, analysis that has been done, uh, you know, has said that, you know, yes, we have a third force rising, you know, in Nigeria. But if you look at Lagos, for instance, um, those who are going to vote for the third force probably are people from southeast and all that. You look at the local governments in Lagos, you have Ojo. You know, have a more of in these places, and that if you can compare it to places where 
you know, if you look at the incumbent party in Lagos, they've had a stronghold, Ali Moshe, uh, Suri Lele, Suri and all those other places uh, where you have a core Yoruba um, uh, uh, population that um, maybe the expectation that the third force candidate may get a good result in Lagos is, is um, being overblown, is blown out of proportion. Um, so, so what do you think about this? If the young people are going to form a majority of the, uh, the, 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 the voters by, by demography, um, do, you, are they, are, do you think they're going to vote along these lines that we've seen in previous years of religion, ethnicity, uh, and, and, and tribalism? Uh, yeah, we must establish, uh, establish, sorry, we must establish one fact that uh, politics is an emotional game and um, sentiment that has to, in line of tribe and religion, will always come in. So if we say we should take it out of the discussion, it's like we are saying that we are not more human. You understand? That is just a human way of looking at issues at times. But at the same time, we must grow beyond our personal sentiments and line and inclination in making decisions. This has to do with Nigeria, for God's sake. So, and I believe Nigeria youth have shown their level of um, awareness and level of uh, exposure. It is true. People tend to vote along party line. If you take a sample of maybe 10 voters now, at least eight of them will have been voting along either tribal line or religion line, or as, as it has to be. But one good thing we must dissociate our mind from, from is that um, the economy, security, and everything, there's not no tribe and religion. So we must really find that black candidate that can give us what we need as a All people, right. as a All nation. All right. It is very, very Suleiman, we, 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 I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to interject, but I'm told that we have to uh, bring our conversation to a close right now. Uh, very interesting analysis from you. Really enjoyed it. I wish you had more time. But uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see what happens tomorrow. You've told me already of A, looking forward to the election. So thank you so much for your time. And I wish you a smooth uh, uh, electoral experience. Thank you for having me. All right. All right. Suleiman Akande, as a public affairs analyst, he joined us via Zoom from Abuja. We have more conversations coming up. We'll talk sports when we return. Please stay with us tomorrow.